Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 to 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and that he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of the donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on, cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from trees and spread them across the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the the son of David! David. Blessed is he who comes comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who's this? The crowd answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Hi everybody, I hope you're doing okay. Um, I recognise that these are really tough times for all of us. Some of you uh, might be ill, lonely, bored, stressed, grieving, scared. Work might be difficult, there might be no work, family life might be difficult, being alone might be difficult. This is our third week of not being able to gather together to worship. We don't know how much longer it's going to be. We do know that we won't be able to be together for Easter Sunday. Probably it will be a lot longer than that. Remember, church isn't cancelled. Being able to meet together is cancelled, but there are so many ways that you can meet together with God during this time. There's the resources that we're making available, reading, praying, worshipping, studying at home, podcasts, reading Christian books, your connect group. Today is Palm Sunday and in our Bible reading we heard about Jesus's entry into Jerusalem on a donkey. It's sometimes called the triumphal entry and as Jesus made his way into Jerusalem for that uh, final week of his life. There were in our reading three things that we were told that the crowd shouted to him. I want us just to look for a moment at those three different things that were shouted to Jesus and what they might mean for us. So firstly, the crowd shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. It's a word that literally means save us. It is quite literally a cry for help. Later, it would become a shout of praise, but in its literal form, it is asking to be saved. A huge crowd walked ahead of Jesus as he travelled into Jerusalem. They shouted out, they laid their cloaks on the ground, they waved palm branches. I'm sorry that this year there aren't any palm crosses, we're not able to give them out to you. Maybe you'll be able to make your own, but that's what happened on this day. The crowd had palm branches that they'd taken off the trees and they waved them as they shouted to Jesus. This cry, this word Hosanna, seems so relevant at the moment, doesn't it? Save us, God. Maybe that's the thing that you find yourself most wanting to shout to God at the moment, Hosanna, save us, save me. This coming week is Holy Week. It's been hard the last couple of weeks not to be able to be together in church, but this week is going to be the hardest yet, probably the hardest of all. There is no more difficult time for us as Christians to be prevented from meeting together than Easter, the holiest, most precious time in our year. This week it will be as if 
we are walking the way of the cross alongside Jesus. It will be hard. We will need to cry, Hosanna, save us. And as we cry out to God to save us, we can be sure that he answers. Some of us might have called ourselves Christians for very many years. Some of us perhaps only for a short time. Some people listening to this, you might not even be sure whether that name Christian is a name that you would give to yourself. But be sure of this. If you cry out to God, Hosanna. If you ask him to save you, if you call on him for help, if you pray to him, if you just pour out your heart and all that is within it to him, he will hear, he will answer, he will listen, he will meet with you. Psalm 106 says this, save us, Lord our God, and gather us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say Amen. Praise the Lord. The second phrase that the crowd cried out as Jesus rode into Jerusalem was, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In this context, blessed means worthy of praise. They're talking about Jesus. They're saying that he is coming in the name of the Lord, coming from God the Father, and that he is worthy of praise. And that's just a a universal truth, isn't it? It's always true that Jesus is worthy of our praise. He is good always. He is with us always. He is faithful always. He is worthy of our praise always. When huge, bad, scary things happen in the world, we inevitably wonder what God is doing. Where is he? Why doesn't he stop it? You might have had friends who don't go to church or don't believe in God asking you that question over this uh, period. Why doesn't God just stop this virus? Why doesn't he just get rid of it? Surely he can do that. You might have wondered the same thing yourself. There's never an easy answer is there to questions like that there isn't just one thing we can say that makes it all okay one part of the bible we can turn to and just say well here it is this is the answer it's easy i do know that god didn't send coronavirus on the world it isn't judgment on anyone for one thing or another if we do x or y or behave in a certain way we can't appease god and and get him to just take it away that isn't how it works I do think that God can use this awful situation for good. I think that's what he is doing already and what he will continue to do over time. I think he can teach us all sorts of things through this time. I think we as individuals, as societies, as churches, as nations can learn things that we really need to learn that perhaps we wouldn't have learnt any other way. I do pray that we'll be changed by this, that we'll become kinder, gentler, more compassionate, that we'll learn to value the things and the people that really matter and to stop the things that don't matter. But every single day, whatever happens, wherever we find ourselves, Jesus is worthy of our praise and that never changes. He's worthy of our praise because of who he is, because he came to earth to live among us, to understand us, to inhabit our world. Because he lived and loved and taught and healed. Because he chose the cross despite never having done a single thing wrong. Because he died for us, for you and for me and for every single person who would ever live. Because all of us are welcome, every single one, if we only say yes to him. The crowd called Jesus blessed as he came in the name of God. And at this time, we also have a huge opportunity to bless others, to show them God, to show them his love as we serve them in Jesus's name. 
whatever your life looks like right now, you can bless others in some way. If there are other people in your house, you can bless them by the way you speak to them, the way you treat them, the way you behave around them to make the shared space that you inhabit a little bit more kind and friendly. If you're working, you can bless the people you interact with by your kindness, your empathy, your patience. If you're able to get out and about, you can bless others by offering help like shopping. If you happen to be able to spare some cash, you can bless others by donating in some way to a good cause. If you're able to contact others, you can bless them with a, a call, a text, a card to show them you're thinking of them. If you use social media, you can bless others by how you occupy that space, by being kind, by showing grace, by sharing encouragements, not fake news and nonsense, by being a peacemaker. If you're someone who prays, the best way of all that you can bless others is to pray for them. Pray for those you love, for the people in your street, for your church family, for all the people in the world making really tough decisions right now. For the key workers, for people who are ill, for people who are grieving. Why not make contact with someone you know today and ask them how you can be praying for them? One of my favourite songs at the moment is Goodness of God by Bethel. And in it, there's this line speaking about God. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I don't need to point out to you the many ways in which that line is so relevant at the moment. It comforts me so much to be reminded that God is as he has always been. We have all been caught unawares by the speed and the scale of this virus, but God is not caught unawares. God is as he has always been. His word tells us he is the same yesterday, today and forever. His goodness endures. The third thing that the crowd shout out as Jesus rides into Jerusalem is this is Jesus the prophet. We can trust Jesus with our future. At the moment we're in a time of huge uncertainty not just in our city not just in our church but in the world. We're not sure what happens next. When will all this end? When will we be able to go back to church, to work, to school? When will we be able to visit our friends and our family again? What will all of this look like next week, next month, next year? We don't know. Nobody knows, not even the wisest medic or scientist or advisor. This week, we'll journey again through the last week of Jesus's life. It will feel different from how it has ever felt before. We know how it ends. It ends with Easter Day. It ends with resurrection. We've read the last page of the book. We know how it ends. But still we have to walk through it. In some ways, this whole coronavirus lockdown experience is like living in one long holy Saturday. We're waiting. We're sad. We're scared. But as the crowd remind us, this is Jesus, the prophet. Corrie ten Boom, the Holocaust survivor, said this, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Our future is unknown right now. That's scary. We're living every day in a state of stress and anxiety. Things are not as they should be, as we would like them to be. But in our unknown future, we have a known God. We know what God is like. We have met him in Jesus, he is good and kind and loving and gentle and wise and merciful and forgiving and generous. We know him and he knows us. Let's just take a moment to be quiet. I realise you might be listening to this in all kinds of different places or at all kinds of different times. It might not feel very easy to be quiet and to still your heart, but we can 
still ourselves before God. Just for a moment, stop and let him speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, come and speak to us. Remind us. Remind us of who you are. Today, this Palm Sunday, and as we enter this Holy Week, let's remember what the crowd said of Jesus. They cried, Hosanna, save us. They said, blessed is he, worthy is he of our praise. And they said, this is Jesus, the prophet, the one who in our unknown future is a known God. So Lord, this day and this week, would you lead us and guide us and comfort us and protect us and hold us close. When life feels so uncertain and so unknown, would you remind us that you are the God who knows? And would we be sure of that every single day? Amen.